Hello, and welcome to Catholicism in the Car. My name is Parker Zerbo. I want to continue our discussion on stages of the spiritual life. Last time we talked about the illuminative stage, and then we briefly mentioned what is called the dark night of the soul, which uh, is kind of in between the illuminative stage and the last stage, what is called the unitive stage. Now I want to first couch all this with the end goal here. What is the end goal? Well, it is a deep and infinitely growing relationship with God. God does not change in this relationship, uh, strictly speaking. God does not change. Um, it is we who change. Uh, you, you could say it is our hearts which need to be opened up, widened, uh, to receive God uh, and God's love uh, as much as possible. Now, uh, strictly speaking, uh, the unitive stage is also called the stage of, often called the stage of perfection. Perfection, but strictly speaking, uh, of course, man cannot become perfect, like in the fullness of that sense. Only God is perfect in the fullness of perfection. Um, man, insofar as he is contingent, um, he he is imperfect. Okay, angels, insofar as they are contingent, are imperfect. Only God, being the only contingent being, being uh, all powerful, all good, uh, all knowing, is is the only absolute perfection that there could ever be and that there will ever be. Okay, but what we what we talk about when we say uh, someone has been perfected in the Christian life, we're talking about a moral perfection, this moral perfection, um, and it would mean that this person uh, has been by the grace of God purified of all sin so not not just um, not just that they no longer commit any mortal sins they no longer commit any venial sins um, and then then they even talk about imperfections uh, so not just uh, not just the absence of sin but the increasing of sanctification so it's like saying um, I can I, I could theoretically I could be a pitcher, or well, let's say, let's say, I could theoretically be a uh, hitter in a baseball game. Someone who hits, hits the ball, you know, sends it across the field, right? I could theoretically hit the ball 100% of the time. I could never miss, okay? But that doesn't mean it's a home run every time, or a grand slam every time, or it doesn't mean I hit the ball, you know, I, I couldn't hit the ball farther and farther every time, theoretically at least. Of course, there are limits to human physicality, but we're we're talking about theoreticals here. Um, theoretically, I could keep hitting the ball further and further and further and never reach that entire perfection. I could never hit the ball infinitely far because I'm contingent. Okay, and, and contingent contingency. What that means is um, basically something something that is not infinite. Uh, something that has been created um, either has uh, a beginning and no end, or a beginning and an end. Okay, and, and I'm sure there's different distinctions between those two. Uh, I just would I just don't know the terminology. Anyway, whereas God has no beginning and has no end, and by definition, uh, I as far as I can tell, by definition, there can only be one of those being, uh, in which it, he's not even really a being if you if you're talking about it in the Aristotelian sense. Um, he's being itself, really. Uh, in the Book of Exodus. Uh, when God speaks to Moses out of the burning bush, what does he say? Uh, what does he say his name is? Yahweh. Uh, it's uh, I am, okay, is the English translation of that. I, I am who am, okay, which is another way of saying being itself. Not just a being, but being itself, okay. Um, so that's the goal here, is for, uh, for uh, an individual human being, a human person, to become so far in love and united to, hence the unitive way, it's the way of being un further united to God, um, that they're so united with God in love that they, uh, it could be said that they become one with God. Okay, I'm going to have to pick this up, pick this off, pick this up off, I don't know that phrase correctly, here in a few minutes.